Thank you, Dr. Sheeran, for talking to Covid Post. Uh, doctor, you are a urologist. You've been seeing a lot of uh, uh, patients uh, in your uh, hospital. Uh, tell me, what are the most common kind of problems that uh, patients come up with? Most probably, uh, common problems being uh, the first one being the stone disease. Okay. Ours being a tropical climate where the sun is very hot and people do present with a lot of stone problems. Kidney stones. Yeah, both kidney stones as well as ureteric stones and bladder stones. Okay. Basically, all the stones are formed in the kidneys. Ah. They either they stay there without any causing any problem initially. Later on, when they come down, they can either block the urinary tubes or the bl the bladder. Okay. And cause pain, uh, so, um, major problems like pain, urinary infections, blood and urine and stuff like that. Okay, okay. So, oh, what else, doctor? Uh, kidney stones is one, and I think uh, uh, urinary tract infection is also very common. Yeah, that's I true. Actually, stones. following stones, huh. most common ones second are the, in the, so the second in the list comes the urinary tract infections. Okay. It affects both men and women. Okay. But may, women are more uh, more prone. prone for the urinary tract infections. And what is the reason, doctor? Basically, it is one the anatomy or the okay. uh, urinary passage. Okay. That is the urinary the urethra, mm -hmm. which is connecting the bladder to the exterior, is very short in females. Okay. It's only okay. only four centimeters. Okay. So more almost ninety to ninety five percent of urinary infections is from outside. Huh. A contamination from outside which enters the bla urine okay. from outside. From outside. So yeah. since it's a very short uh, length of the urethra in females, they can easily catch up a urinary infection. Whereas in males, it is a long urinary path which is about 20 centimeters. Okay. So before the organism can enter in, it gets flushed out. Okay. This is one reason. The second one common is being the habit, holding habit of the women. They don't pass urine outside. They have to get back home right. to work. Right. So as they hold urine for long, the bladder capacity gradually increases and the tone of the bladder comes down. So they don't empty effectively. Hmm. And this again, the longer duration of storage, the bacteria tends to uh, ascend up through the urethra from outside in. Okay. And that's another second cause. So uh, this uh, also is because you, you don't, one doesn't drink enough water? It's not like that. You actually, we do want um, uh, all people to drink enough water huh. and pass urine in the regular intervals. Hmm. So that all get a, you form enough urine, you pass out enough urine at right intervals of time. Okay. So that can avoid a lot of infections. So doctor, we were talking about uh, stones. Hmm. So um, how many cases really do you get in your uh, OPD and uh, uh, what do you think such patients should really, what is the warning signs and what should they do to prevent it? When you talk about stones actually the presentation is every third or the fourth patient who walks into the OPD presents with the stone broad disease. The classical symptoms what they present with is a, a pain in their loins and some patients, no, not all symptoms are universal to uh, applicable to all patients. Some patients present only with pain. Some present with, present with pain associated with the, a burning sensation while passing urine or some associated blood and urine as well. Okay. So when these patients come in, look, so based on the symptoms, we evaluate them as investigation like an ultrasound or a CT scan based on the necessity. And once the stone is confirmed, so we have to plan the management based on the position of the stone, the size of the stone and other associated complications which they present with. Hmm. So if, the, for example, the patient is having a stone in the ureter, that is a tube connecting the kidney to the bladder, hmm. we have something called the ureteroscopy, okay. a rigid scope where we go inside through the normal urinary orifice, go in, uh, find, the, find the stone, basket it, fragment it with either a lithoclast, a pneumatic instrument okay. or a laser. Okay. And we fragment it into so fine fragments. Break, breaking the stone. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. So we break it into fine fragments and we retrieve it. Okay. That is for the ureteric stones. If it is a renal stone, which is a stone within the kidney, which is very big, <laughs> there we have a two, two, two techniques we have. One is a non-surgical one called ESWL, hmm. extra sh shock wave lithotripsy. So where we pass waves from outside. Waves. Okay. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's sound wave pass from outside and we blast it 
okay. this is actually a non-surgical one uh, which is available in our hospital okay. not all centers do have it okay. this is uh, only very few hand selected uh, centers have it here in Coimbatore okay. and the advantage of this is it's a non-surgical one no IP admission is needed it's a daycare procedure and but the disadvantage of this is this it can break so less than two centimeter stones and soft stones okay. not applicable for hard stones and stones more than two centimeters okay. Okay. so the other this is one modality for kidney stones yeah. the other one being uh, RIRS that is retrograde intrarenal surgery where we use a flexible okay. ureteroscope go into the normal urinary passage we use using laser dust it and make it into fine dust and get it remote mm. and for said this is also applicable for stones less than two centimeters okay uh, there's a third modality as well which is for larger stones more than two centimeters it's called pcnl percutaneous nephrolithotomy where we make a very small hole through the loin mm. enter the kidney and break the stone into fine uh, particles and remove them okay Dr. the loin is what? loin is the flank the side okay. where the kidneys are located okay okay so doctor uh, what are the issues that uh, the uh, elderly uh, come to you with yeah come on, coming uh, talking about elderly com patients who commonly present are elderly men it is basically because of the prostatic enlargement prostate is a small shield shape organ which is located just below the bladder mm. on the passage of the urinary in the urinary tract so what happens is all this prostate is present only in men and women don't have it yeah. so women uh, have are uh, kept out of it so these men after age of around 40 years mm -hmm. this organ st starts to grow slowly okay so as it, gra it grows over the years together so what happens as it grows it starts to occlude the lumen of the urinary passage it's causing them urinary problems like common the common presentations will be the urine st the uh, stream of urine starts to become slow Okay. It gradually over the years it becomes slow slow and slow hmm. and to a point that some patients or they don't they're not able to pass urine, urine. Yeah. they go that for retention yeah with associated abdominal pain, pain. as well. yeah. the second symptom they will have is some burning sensation when they pass urine hmm. yeah, only they'll have burning sensation only when they pass urine okay. the third symptom will be frequency there is more number of frequent times. times that they have to go to the loo increases yes. and next symptom will be an uh, increased frequency during the night time every for example some patients even for every 15 minutes they go to the loo okay. to pass urine okay. these are some of the symptoms that they present with and some may also they will present with blood in urine okay. and these men they are more prone for urinary infections as well because the urine doesn't empty fully mm. all whenever we pass urine we should empty it fully in these patients because of the blockage in the passage they tend to hold up urine inside mm. So when the held up urine, automatically they tend to get, they are prone for infections and other complications. Okay, so how do they avoid, I mean you said this is an organ growth, so yeah. nothing much can be done about it? It's a, it? it, there is nothing called prevention here, it's actually the thing is, it, it is a natural phenomenon. Yeah. All men as we grow old, we, they, it, uh, it happens. So, so what percentage will end up with prostate? You mean prostate problem? Pro, yeah, prostate issues, yeah. Almost 70 to 80 percent of them, they present, they will have symptom at one point of time in their life. 70 to 80 percent. Yeah, okay. there are very few uh, patients who will not have much of symptoms. Okay. So these patients, uh, when they have symptoms, they can uh, be managed based on their symptoms. Okay. Minor symptoms can be managed with medications, and so little more severe symptoms, they will need a surgical. Uh, relief of the obstruction okay. it's called the TORP where again endoscopically we remove the blockage so that re create the passage normal passage again so that so they can pass freely free flow, yeah. yeah doctor when it comes to children what are the issues that uh, you are seeing in pe again pediatric age group more or less like may, uh, adults they also present with stone disease they also present with urinary tract infections and uh, the most co most common ones who present the patients with for something called posterior urethral valve where there is an outlet obstruction in the urinary passage from the bladder to the outside so these patients actually some of most of them have problem passing urine yeah correct actually these patients these children you, they are diagnosed even before birth that is during their antenatal period in their antenatal scans hmm. okay okay that's interesting yeah here we can see that the bladder is over distended and uh, amniotic fluid is also less 
and something like that so and the, these the problems can be detected antenatally okay. and if necessity can be also corrected antenatally which is very uh, not done routinely done in our, our country but abroad they do okay. uh, 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 fetal intervention as well okay. and uh, once within these patients once they are born immediately we assess their renal parameters the lung development all those right? and uh, <coughs> we do a procedure called uh, valve fulgration okay. where we endoscopically fulgrate the remove the valve okay. so that they can pass urine freely okay. Okay. so these patients uh, since it is for a long duration from even internally they can have bladder uh, function problems mm -hmm. later on in their life okay. so they should be on regular follow-ups okay. this is one of the commonest problems what we face in pediatric patients the other problems what we face is hypospadiasis where the normal opening is not in the normal position it is abnormal somewhere oh, okay. so so likewise so uh, yeah all can be corrected which we regularly do in our center yeah. okay. So, doctor, can we talk about uh, malignancy? What is the, uh, you know, how many people uh, with cancer uh, really do you see, and what are the kind of cancer uh, uh, patients? What are the kind of cancer that they come up with? And talking about malignancy, it can, especially urological malignancies, it can start from the kidneys, the tubes connecting the kidneys to the bladder the bladder malignancies are there, bladder cancers are there mm. and cancers of the urethra that is the tube connecting to the exterior are also mm. there. The most common presentation what they present with is more, all these patients the mo most of them will have blood in urine. Blood in urine. So okay. blood in urine is not only malignancy it can also come in stones and infections as well but whenever there is blood in urine always the first point you'll have to rule out is a malignancy right. there. Right. Okay. So a patient with a kidney malignancy will present with abdominal pains, blood in urine mm -hmm. or some uh, vague symptoms like b burning sensation will pass in mm -hmm. urine. Whereas the patient with a bladder tumor will present with again blood, painless, no pain in the abdomen but, but blood and clots in the urine. Mm -hmm. And sometimes without even blood, they can have some burning sensation around in their urine. And this is for both men and women? Yeah, it is common for both men and women. Okay. Okay, malignancies especially for uh, only in men are prostate malignancies yeah. it is, they will present like typically like a bladder outlet obstruction due to a benign problem that is a benign enlargement of prostate mm. the sim their symptoms will be more or less the same mm. like frequent increased frequency of mixture passing urine no, no, number of times they pass in the night will be more burning sensation will in the, when they pass urine symptoms will be the same mm. But this is a basically a uh, diagnosis of exclusion. We are regularly when we see them a rectal examination, we do check for the prostate okay. if there is abnormality there. Okay. And we do a uh, test called PSA, prostate specific antigen, which will be elevated in malignancies. Mm. So if these two are there, when the clinical suspicion we are associated with the elevated PSA, then we'll have to rule out prostatic malignancy. We what we do is we take a transrectal biopsy of the prostate, mm. which will confirm whether the malignancy is there or not. So these cancer patients, are, what are the kind of stages that they come to you in? Doctor? Actually, the presentation varies. Mm. Some patients they are uh, they don't have any symptoms. They are detected incidentally when they come for a master health checkup. Okay. That is another one emphasis for a master health checkup actually. Right. Because they don't have any symptoms. Suddenly one fine day they will present with symptoms when they are in an advanced stage okay. where nothing can be done. Okay. When these master health checkups they help us detect malignancies at the early stage. <coughs> uh, when these patients they without any symptoms at the early stage when they are detected it is completely curable. Okay. So it can be completely removed and they are disease free. Okay. And uh, as we said about mal malignancies, these can be managed either tradition by traditional open method or the latest ones like the key, uh, keyhole surgery, laparoscopy. Uh, and our center has uh, best uh, laparoscopic surgeons in the state and the uh, city and uh, we do all uh, laparoscopic uh, surgeries here even for both benign and uh, malignant conditions. Okay. So doctor, let's now talk about uh, kidney failure. Uh, what is the stage in which a patient needs to go for uh, transplant and you know until what stage can he do with medication? Yeah, good question. Actually, renal failure is based on the amount of output they put out. It's called, we calculate something called the GFR, mm -hmm. glomerular filtration, the amount of urine the kidney produces. 
so these patients and the patients with renal failure up till they come to a stage where and they cannot excrete their waste products outside that is about third when the gfr falls to more less than 30 30 ml per minute so they that means they are in a state where there is the kidney damage is irrecoverable okay. that is they cannot manage by themselves and uh, in these patients they usually go on dialysis so dialysis can be done as until they are can manage on dialysis. But it's, it's an expensive procedure. Yeah, it is not only really expensive, it also has its own uh, drawbacks. Drawbacks. Side like, effects. Like, so, yeah, so it, is, uh, it has an uh, increased uh, pressure on the hearts and the circulatory system. Okay. So whenever possible, the earlier the, when the kidney function is uh, irrecoverable, in less than a 30 ml GFR, uh, it is better to go for a transplant where the patient's on the strain on the body is less due to the dialysis and the heart, especially the heart. And these patients, they tend to have a normal life, hmm. what they had before, when before the renal failure. So, doctor, now that we're talking about transplant, how is the uh, supply or uh, you know demand supply of organ? Uh, are you are you having issues there? Worldwide, the yeah. Worldwide, actually, there is demand is more, but the supply is less. Yes, actually, there are two kinds of uh, donation. That is, one is a living donor yes. program, yes. another is a cadaveric program. Yes. But, uh, abroad, the cadaveric program is very well enlisted. Even there, there is a demand. Demand is more, the supply is yeah. less. Yeah. Here, there is uh, even though we have a, go a good set of organizations monitoring this, uh, the society is not yet uh, tuned up for uh, organ donation. Right. So the demand is really more and the supply is very less yeah. so we in our center actually we have started renal transplants and uh, we are in the pipeline of uh, doing both the living donor as well as cadaver yeah. okay. Okay. so doctor do you also see cases with uh, uh, fertility issues and sexual dysfunctions yeah uh, yeah we urologists are also andrologists we also cover male uh, sexual dysfunctions as well as infertility problems so in coming to sexual dysfunctions, problems we patients commonly come with erectile dysfunctions as well as premature ejaculations. And some patients even come with an ejaculations where they know the semen doesn't come out. Okay. Okay. And when infertility coming about talking about infertility, we do pay treat with patients with primary infertility where they have not had children at all, and patients also with secondary infertility, where they already had a first child and they are trying to conceive with a second one, they have issues there. So we urologists and come from Android, we treat with these patients, may we treat for the male infertility problem. So what is the percentage of uh, I mean success rate, doctor, as far as infertility is concerned? See, we're talking about infertility, uh, it is 50% male factor and 50% female yeah, factor. Right, right. So, even if the fertility of one uh, partner is very good, it will compensate for the other. Okay. So, <coughs> it is a co combination of both male and female factors together. Mm -hmm. So, can't particularly say about one factor alone, talk about one factor alone. Okay. So, thank you so much for talking to Kovai Post, thank doctor. Thank you. And thank, thank Kovai Post for giving the opportunity. Thank you. To get instant news updates, like the Kowai Post page. Click on See First to view the news first. Also, in YouTube, subscribe to Kowai Post channel to watch interesting news and videos.